Good morning. This will be message four of characteristics of living things. Life grows and develops. We see that throughout nature, plants and fungus and animals, they have a life cycle that starts smaller and gets bigger, uh, starts at a small amount of cells, becomes a large amount of cells. And specifically, we as the human being have an unusually long, long gestation period, an unusually long childhood compared to other animals, so that we can invest in our young. That is, if you compare a human being to a mouse, they are reproducing quickly, dying quickly, because their function is really just a piece of an ecosystem, a thing that eats grain gets eaten by small carnivores and predators. The human being, in contrast, has a large brain, and God has made us to have dominion over this planet. And as a result, our life cycle is different. We have a lengthy gestation uh, where the amount of cells grows inside the body, a live birth, and we have what is a relatively long protected childhood because it's not acceptable for our young to be eaten by wolves, not acceptable for them to be eaten by lions. Humans would like to keep all of our young and would like to raise them all to maturity. And we enjoy pointing out the offspring that we have raised. I would like to show you that in our spiritual life as well. Uh, two days ago, uh, I went over on time. If you go beyond 15 minutes, it creates some difficulty with upload. Um, if I seem to be going extremely long, I will cut this and I will do a second half and they will both upload today. Um, John talks about a spiritual life cycle, life progression in 1st John 2, 12, 13, and 14. He says, I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you fathers because you've known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because you have known the father. I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. John has given us characteristics of three stages of spiritual life. Now, while he uses exclusively male language, we are to assume that since the house of God is male and female, that is talking about male and female children, uh, young men and women, young sons and daughters of the kingdom, and spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers, uh, despite his language. Uh, point one must be this. Physical age is not the same, does not equal spiritual age. Um, there are many places where uh, physically gray-haired people that are spiritually infants are revered because of the amount of years they've been around and rule the human world and in sometimes rule uh, the Church of God because of the gray hair, because of the years. Um, and this is wrong, that we would perceive them according to their physical age. Now, we are to uh, respect our elders, regardless of whether or not we see them as more wise or more mature than us. 
But when it comes to perceiving them as the spiritual fathers or mothers of the house of God, you have a different yardstick, a different measurement. When you become saved, you begin again like an infant. Whether you are seven or seventy, you enter the kingdom of God as a child. And you must learn, just as a child does, how to walk, uh, how to eat, how to conduct yourself, how to speak, um, how to not do embarrassing bodily things in front of others, which are acceptable as an infant, which are not acceptable as an adult. Little children spiritual children of the house of God. What do they know? Well, first of all, they know that they're forgiven. Amen. They know the name of Jesus. And they know God the way that a baby knows their dad. You don't discipline babies. It's not wrong to cry if that's the only communication you have. It's not wrong to vomit on the shirt of your parents if that's the only thing your body knows how to do. It's not wrong to do baby things when you're a baby, and you will therefore only see one side of your father, one side of those parents in you, while you are at that life stage. You will only know softness and protection. You will not know the discipline of God. What do they have? They have a grace that comes with childhood. That is, there are things that a baby can do, or even a little child can do, that are not acceptable as an adult. That they know that we look the other way about. Um, A long time ago, uh, my daughter, when she was about a year old or less, I was holding her and looking into her face and smiling, and she looked at me real big and then she puked on me. <laughs> there is no one else in this world who can puke on me, and I will find it amusing. I assure you my reaction will be different if one of my brothers or sisters in the house of God vomits in my face. I assure you my reaction will not be laughter. Uh, it might be that I will just flee immediately and wash myself off, or it might be that I would become very upset with you. I don't know. But no adult has ever vomited on me. No other person has ever vomited on me. And in the same fashion, children in the house of God are under a specific grace that means that many of the things they do will be chalked up to childhood. There is in fact an age uh, before which we're not accountable for our actions before God because we don't understand. And I'm certain that the vomiting incident occurred well within that window where we say, it's just a baby, they don't know. But here I am, 15 years later, 14 years later, laughing because I thought it was such an adorable thing at the time. We have these baby glasses that say, that's adorable. Uh, when a new believer gives their testimony and it is full of errors or the occasional cuss word or reference to criminal activity, and they get their scripture wrong and they say something inaccurate about Jesus. And all we can hear is, oh, that new believer is saying how much they love God. And we don't say a word about all those little problems there. They lack strength. They lack the word. Because it says the young men have the strength. And the young men have the word inside of them, right? And the phrase in their mind is, Jesus loves me. Just like the phrase in a child's mind is, my parents love me. 
my life is great, I am being well taken care of. Um, in order to transition from child to young man or young woman in the church, something inside of them has to be ready and desirous to grow. Um, to put the word inside of yourself instead of letting others put it into you. Um, we know that Jesus was in the temple debating with scribes and Pharisees at the age of, we believe, 12, bar mitzvah age. He had been putting the word of God in himself and was willing to uh, get involved in a real physical way. Uh, physical, I mean, putting himself there as a person, uh, not any other definition of that. Um, these young men and women have decided they're not going to be children anymore. Now, that happened for you as a natural process, as a human being in the physical. Puberty made you aware of your body growing. Um, increased your physical appetite, made you aware of the opposite sex. Um, if I can speak for just my own gender, most of the time men get, young men get jobs so that we can take girls on dates, so they take us seriously. It's a strategy of moving slowly toward uh, the idea of being a grown man who has responsibility but is willing to undertake those things because he wants um, to be an adult, he wants to eventually have a wife, he wants to eventually have kids of his own. Um, now some men get their first job so they can uh, do stuff on their cars, or um, for, so then my first job was given to me, but uh, most of my money might have gone into music. Uh, but there is a, a transition point it's a different transition point in the spiritual because we have to choose it and God puts moments in our lives that are analogous to that but while puberty will happen to you and you will get definitely interested in the opposite sex and well this is what I'm gonna be when I grow up all those things will come because of infusions of testosterone and estrogen saying well I want that stuff out there um, you can remain spiritually infantile for the remainder of your physical life unless you make choices to suppress sin and put the Word of God inside of yourself and choose to grow and seek God for yourself that's part one